Ever wondered what separates the best Madden players in the world from the average ones, even though they run oftentimes the same formations, the same offenses, the same defenses? What makes the best Madden players in the world? And really the secret sauce is, uh, or at least one of them, is the ability to adjust. Now, I'm not talking about adjustments for adjustment's sake. I'm talking about wise adjustments. And this video is going to help you in both College Football 25 and Madden NFL 25. We're going to be talking about how to adjust like a pro in Madden and in college football. Now, that being said, I did want to drop this video here on the channel today because I also wanted to tell you guys about my plans for both Madden 25 and for college football 25. For Madden 25, all of our Madden content is going to continue to remain on this channel right here. And you can expect a full year of content with three videos every single day to help you get better on YouTube, as well as we're going to be uh, posting all of our offensive and defensive eBooks on school.com. Now, if you know anything about our channel over the last three years, we have released over a hundred offensive and defensive eBooks for Madden, and we're going to continue that, that train into Madden 25, but we're also going to do the same thing for college football. The cool thing we're doing this year that I did want to let you know about is our school community is going to have access to both college football and Madden offensive and defensive ebooks. So for just $10 a month, you will get all of our college football offensive and defensive ebooks, all of our Madden offensive and defensive ebooks, any pro tips that we're going to be doing in our community, as well as some live lab sessions we're going to be doing throughout the year. So if you want to sign up for that, it's going to help you become much better on both sides of the ball on both games. $10 a month, the link's going to be in the description. And if you want to check out my college football 25 YouTube channel, I'll be dropping a link to that down in the description below. So let's talk about how to adjust like a pro in Madden and in college football. So the first thing and the first rule of defense that I like to have, no matter what defense you are using, whether it's dollar, whether it's nickel 3-3, three, three, whether it's dime, whether it's 3-3-5 three, three, odd, 3-3 three, three, cub, any of these defenses, the biggest principle that I can give you is you always want to make it look the same post-snap. Now in college football and in Madden 25, we're going to have a lot of different ways in which we can do that. But as of right now, the main way you can do that is through coming out in the same defense every single time. So oftentimes that is a blitz concept because the next biggest key to defense in Madden and in college football both is to have some type of pressure plan. That is typically going to be a three-man pressure, a four-man pressure, a five-man pressure, and a six-man pressure potentially even a seven-man blitz. You want to have ways in which you can create pressures on the opponent. Traditionally, this has been done through DB Fire 2, Spinner, Nickel 3-3 three, three LB Blitz, 3-3-5 um, three, three, Odd Crossfire, all kinds of different blitzes. So your formation is going to have one of those, right? Your defensive formation that you're going to use is going to have well, at least one. The cool part about dollars is it has like three or four different versions. And so you want to make it look the same. So one of the easiest ways to make everything look the same in Madden right now is baseline. Now, going forward, it's going to be to show the same coverage shell looks. We'll have to get into that once we get into the game. But as of right now, it's basically baseline or it's man align, right? If you want to play more of a man-to-man -man coverage based defense, man align is a really good feature. We're going to be doing baseline here. The reason I have auto flip off is for the blitzing aspect. And then we're going to get into our, our coverages. Now, typically, you can run a lot of different things. You can turn your zone coverage to match. You can leave it on default. You can set zone drops. You can not set zone drops. Those are all different things. And we really cover in, you know, kind of how to utilize all of those tools within our full ebooks. But what I want to explain in this video is how to adjust to what your offense is doing. Because at the core, defense is just adjusting to what the offense is doing. Now, that being said, you want to be doing that from a defense that is symmetrical, oftentimes looks the same, everything. You, the pre-snap picture needs to look the same. That is really important. The post-snap picture is what needs to change. So we can set some audibles here. We're going to have DB Fire 2. We're going to have uh, free safety, if I can find it here, free safety zone blitz. And then we're going to have this uh, cover three cloud, which is a really versatile coverage. So as you look here at these plays that I put in my audibles, I put a cover three blitz. I put a cover two blitz, a cover zero blitz, and a cover three roll coverage. And then I can basically create everything else out of whatever base play that I want to come out in. Now, for the purpose of this video, we're going to do it out of double safety go and kind of combine a couple tips within one, as this is one of the best ways to be playing defense in the game. Now, we're going to teach this from bunch, but then we're going to show this 
in other formations as well. So we know that Colts Bunch is the most popular defense or offense in the game. And so I want to start there and then we're going to use that kind of framework to kind of work out of there. So a couple key questions to ask whenever you are trying to make adjustments. Number one, for the formation that you're playing, typically if you're if you're playing more of a meta formation like bunch or trips or tight, um, even five wide, for example, you're going to have some base coverage shells, right? For example, one of the best base coverages for bunch would be to go to spinner, pinch your D line, and then you would go with these adjustments that I'm about to show you on your screen. So this is a base coverage. This is a base coverage shell, and it's meant to accomplish a specific purpose. There are only a couple of things that they can do to attack this coverage. One of the things they can do is they can throw a corner out to the right side of the screen if they are running their bunch to the short side, double corners, tight end wheels, but our user is over here as well. Another thing, as you can see, this coverage is a little weak to the left side, and so they could potentially run some left side flooding combinations. So those are some of the basic ideas just in terms of like, okay, we have a base covered shell. That base covered shell is going to have weaknesses. For example, something very simple, free safety zone blitz. Just put this safety in a yellow zone and shade underneath. This is a base covered shell, right? Now, also, if you notice here, this is something super important. As you can see, whenever I adjust out of this free safety zone blitz, if I pinch my D line, it changes where players go. So this is an important thing to look at too whenever you're looking at your defenses is when you audible, when you hot route, when you think, when you adjust, what happens in terms of the movement? Do they stay the same? For example, another thing that is super important to discuss is if you see here, if I go to spinner and I press this left side guy, notice that he's going to go up into the inside. Now, let's go back to free safety zone blitz here. If I do the same adjustment where I bring him up to the line, you'll notice that he is slightly to the left of that player. So these are important because what this is going to do is it's going to limit your pre-snap tells, which is going to maximize the one thing you have going or one of the few things you have going for you defensively, which is your ability to give the same picture pre-snap and change the picture post snap. That is so important. So one of the best coverages from this is just this basic DB fire two. And basically what we're going to do with this is we're just going to shade underneath and then we're going to cloud flat both of these outside guys. Now what this is going to do is it's going to defend the intermediate sidelines pretty decently. We're going to stop those short corner routes and we're going to basically try to force our opponent to take their underneath. So you see here, this is one of the ways in which we can kind of create a coverage that is going to create a, a, a little bit more of a challenge for them to attack. Again, so the first question is, where can they attack me with their formation? So in bunch, what are the main things that you're going to get? The main thing that you're going to get in bunch this year is you're going to get double post with a streak. This is one of the main plays people run. So how can we stop this play? Right. And to save you a little bit of lab work, we're just going to go to free safety zone blitz, which is really good for this play. If you take a look at this play here real quickly, all we're going to do is we are just going to basically shade underneath and then we're going to play cover two to the left side. Um, whoops, I'm sorry, I didn't mess that up. Let me uh, go invert that half there and then we're going to have that purple and then our user is going to stand right here. This is going to stop the majority of double post setups in terms of what we're able to do. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda start here and then we're gonna kinda come back to the running back and you see this is a really good defense for double post. So that's an example, like where are they gonna attack me? Another one that they're gonna do in, in bunch every single year is gonna be verticals. This play right here is gonna be something they're gonna use to attack you. So how does this play attack you? Well, this play attacks you in the seam area of the field. So as you can see here, what we can then do is maybe say, okay, we're maybe going to guess that they're running verticals. How would we defend this? Well, instead of using this purple zone, we're going to use a vertical hook to take away the running back streak out of the backfield. This allows our user to kind of come over here and really work to this tight end. And then we're basically saying we need our pressure to get home before they can get the crosser. So again, these are just examples of like mainstay concepts that you need to be prepared to defend out a bunch. Another one that's really popular is basically 
um, it, it, let me show you real quick. It's a double corner to the right side. So how, how would you defend the double corner to the right side? You might do something. So again, this would be a, a main concept that they have this year. Um, how would you defend something like a corner out to the right? Well, one of the easiest ways to defend corner routes to the right is this cover three cloud. And then what we would probably do is just take the slot and man them up to the tight end. Now, the reason we're going to man that slot up to that tight end is in case they run verticals, then he will guard the tight end wheel, right? So that's an, another example of, again, just kind of adjusting to what the offense has in their disposal. These are what I would consider base coverage shells, which is really, really important. And then we'll kind of get into some of the advanced questions here in just a second. But again, you'll see here, this is going to defend that really, really well, as you can see. So those are a couple different methods. Now, another question that you have to ask, and this is what we were talking a little bit about with double post, is what can my user actually cover? So we look at a formation, we say, okay, where are they going to attack me? What are the main things they're going to do, right? Well, to the left side, they might run... Uh, you know, a C route and a wheel, right? This is something that's very popular. So this does a really good job of countering the outside third. Or they might run a double post, you know, something like this. This is going to do another good job of really countering that outside third. But that does not counter is the deep half. So now we know that we can stop a lot of different concepts that they can run on that left-hand side just by simply deep halving this left side, uh, this left side player. This then allows for us to say maybe put like a quarter zone. We don't need a middle third necessarily because there's not a lot of plays that have a skinny post on it. And even if they did have a skinny post, and I'll show that real quick here, you know, let's say they have, let's say they have a skinny post. They're going to try to bomb your deep half and quarter adjustment. Watch that inside quarter. That inside quarter has a good chance to guard that if that's, you know, a deep end zone KO. So, you know, again, what can, what can they actually do? Functionally, what are they likely to do? What can they do? Obviously, in this formation, the majority of receiving threats are to the right-hand side of the screen. Another question we need to ask is, and really important is what can my user cover? Now, in my opinion... I think, especially at this point of the year, next year might be a little different. You can creep on different players. But in general, who's your user defender? And for the most part, you kind of want that user defender to be the same player. Again, we talk about making that pre-snap picture look the same and then changing the post-snap picture. So in this example, for this defense, we're going to be using this right side linebacker pretty much every single time. This gives us the most amount of flexibility in terms of the ability to send multiple different pressures. And the another really big principle, this is why Dollar is good every year. This is why 3-3 Cubs is good every year. The best players on the field for you to adjust are your safeties and your corners. They, um, you, you want to have as many safeties and corners on the field as possible. Another thing that we want to ask is what do my base shells take away? So the base coverages that I'm going to run, and that's what I was kind of going over with, like the cover three cloud, the free safety zone blitz, the DB fire two, we might literally just be able to rotate between this coverage shell right here, which is a maximum coverage defense, this send five pressure uh, right here, uh, which is really good for double post, and then maybe... Uh, you know, we go to a different send five out of DB fire where we're going to, you know, use something more so like this to defend the opponent. So these are three different methods in which we can essentially have three different coverages, their base coverages, and they take away certain things that other coverages don't. Right. That is super important. So where are the holes in your coverage? And this last question, who is their main receiving threat against you? So in bunch. Generally speaking, the main receiving threat is going to be the slot receiver, all right? The tight end is, is good. The running back is good. But the main player, the player that's going on corners, crossers, posts, is the slot receiver. So what we want to kind of use these answers to these questions to do is say, okay, how are they actually going to beat my base coverages? And then we can prepare adjustments for them accordingly. So, for example, one of the best ways to beat – this coverage is a concept called smash return and because I don't have it in my audibles I'm just going to kind of create it like this this is one of the best plays to beat how I play defense against bunch because it takes advantage of the fact that I don't want to have a flat over there a lot of times and so where where can they attack with this play right if they start running this play they can throw you know this route for example so how can we cover you know all how can we cover this well, the way that we can cover this is we can go to DB Fire 2, and we can simply stay in this. 
Now, if you look at this, another kind of an interesting thing about this is you could also occasionally send four. So let's say you wanted to do something like, um, you know, let's say you wanted to still be decent against corner outs to the right side. This is going to do good against double post because you have the deep half. You have that soft squat that's going to kind of midpoint between the C route and the drag. So you have the ability to stop a lot of different things with this coverage shell as well. So the cool part about this is if they run that same play out of smash return, and now we'll talk a little bit about the chess match of Madden as we kind of work through this, you know, but let's say they run smash return here. They uh, really don't have anything, right? Your, your users are fully able to take that underneath route. That soft squat's going to kind of midpoint's a tough throw. You know, they don't have a lot with that, with that play. But what do they have when we call this? And this is what you got to really understand about adjusting. So when we call this defense right here, what do they have? Um, you know, especially let's say we do this coverage right here. And again, assuming our user is, you know, going to basically take away the tight end wheel. So what do they have if they call this? Well, the main thing they're going to be able to accomplish, the main thing they're going to be able to do is they're going to be able to go to the double corner to the right side. And so you see here, if we watch this through, that's the main route that they're going to be able to hit. Because if my user runs to the tight end, they can throw the drag backside, right? So once they start to do this, this is where it becomes kind of a, a little bit of a chess match. That's when we want to start mixing in this coverage out of cover three cloud, right? And what this coverage is going to do a really good job of is taking away that double corner, especially if we want to, you know, man up the tight end. This is going to take away the majority of things they want to do, right? From double corner, if they run verticals, for example, I've seen this throw get picked, especially if you have a KO out there. So we're able to, you know, kind of take away different pockets of the field. What we don't want to typically do against bunch is we don't want to get in a situation and you would get it more so out of bunch strong, but you don't really want to get in a situation where, you know, you're having to double flat on the left. So, and this is where the blitz comes in. So if we go to that spinner play, one way we can accomplish that is with this shade underneath yellow and basically doing these adjustments. This is where the send five becomes really helpful because all we have to do here is just use this crosser for a second. If they don't pick up the blitz, they're going to get sacked, right? And even, even if they do pick up the blitz, oftentimes you're going to get better sheds. Another thing that we can do and another simple adjustment is let's say they start – Let's say they start really attacking that left hand flat, that left side flat there. They could do it a lot of different ways, right? But let's just say, you know, they start attacking the left side flat. You don't, you don't have to stop everything every time. You just have to stop it at the right time. So a couple different ways we could defend this, but one of the easiest ways is just to go to free safety zone blitz. And he because he motioned, this guy is going to be kind of dumb. So let me just reset the play get this guy back over here and we could do this all out of we could actually just adjust this but essentially what we would do is we would throw a hard flat whoops like so it's just basically stock free safety zone blitz and we would just shade underneath and if we wanted to we could actually and this is an adjustment i would totally make we could play an inverted cover two you know where we're playing something like this because now the reason you would maybe do an adjustment like this is be, is for that smash return idea or that backside drag. This is going to do a really good job because you see there, I can just use her there and I've got pretty good pressure, right? So I'm just mid pointing in the middle with my user and that's a tough read to make under pressure. Another very simple thing we could do is we can just, as you can see here, just audible to free city zone blitz. Now, the reason why I don't think it's a great idea to always take this right side flat away is because they're not always going to be attacking the right side flat. So, for example, when we go to take away the left side flat, maybe what we want to do is we want to run a cover two on the right and a inverted cover two on the left. The reason this would be good is because we're still going to be good against double post. We're still going to be good against some of the other things, which is why your adjustments, when you are thinking about the adjustments you make, you also want to think about, like, what can I, what, if I adjust this way, what's now open? That is super important. Um, let me kind of flesh that out a little bit more. But you see here, I mean, this is pretty good defense for 
what a smash return setup would, would basically be. Um, so what I was just talking about is really, really important to kind of grasp. So I wanted to spend a little bit more time kind of unpacking it. So whenever you make an adjustment, and it could be anything. So for, for example, let's say they're killing us with this, you know, uh, double post route. Well, we're going to throw a, a deep half here to the right side. So this is, a, this is an example of we're making an adjustment to a play that they are running, right? Well, what happens, let's just say, if, if we do that and they run the setup like this, if you're playing a good player, this C route is now wide open to the left side. The reason that's important to understand is because every adjustment you make is going to then oftentimes leave something else open. That is why you're not trying to stop everything. As a defensive player, you are trying to ask, what are they doing? What, where are they, what, what are they probably going to do? And then if you're in a course of a game, you might say, what have they been doing a lot? What, how have they been attacking me? How have they been beating some of my base coverage defenses? And how can I tweak just slightly to adapt to that? For example, if they're throwing double post all the time, you throw that deep half out there, now it's, now it's not necessarily open. So let's say, you know, we're kind of watching all this through and we're saying, okay, well, we want to stop that double post. So we know we got to have to deep half, but we also know that that leaves the C route on the left side open. So one simple adjustment we can now make is take that slot corner and put him on a curl flat. Now, what does that leave open? And you kind of see how we're going to kind of think through this a little bit, but what, what does that adjustment leave open? Well, that adjustment leaves the running back open underneath in the middle of the field, which is where my user is. So that's fine, right? We're willing to, we're willing to have that, that be open, for example. You know, but we could you know, craft a coverage like this. And if you look here to the right side, what's open? Well, the deep corner route on the right side is open. So maybe we wanna, maybe we wanna man up the slot receiver which means then we have to user the tight end if they do run verticals, right? But we have this slot receiver manned up, and so you kind of see how this goes. He'll kind of bracket there. You can kind of lurk in there, and you're still sending five. And, of course, if you wanted to try to cover everything, then you probably want to only send three, which is why Cover 3 Cloud is such a great defense to have in your audibles because you can just pinch crash down, uh, blitz your user, send three here. And now as we look at this, what's the main thing that's going to be open? Well, a flat to the tight end is really the only thing that I'm worried about or a wheel route to the tight end. And we can take both of those away by simply manning up the tight end. And now we have a lot of stuff covered. And if we want to have that deep half on the back end, we can put a deep half right there. And that's perfectly fine. And now we have a really good defense for a lot of the things they're going to do in bunch. There are still things open. The main thing being a slot post route running back underneath. Those are some of the things that we would then take away with our send five pressures or other coverages. Point being here, guys, is you can't stop everything on every play. You have to pick and choose. And a good Madden player, good defensive player, good college football player, you're going to be playing off of tendencies and you're going to understand that your defenses need to work together systematically so that you within a couple different base coverages are covering the majority of things that your opponent is going to be doing. I hope that this video kind of shed some light on how to actually make good quality adjustments all the time and how to slightly tweak those adjustments so that you can play better defense. Guys, I have a ton of content coming both here on my main channel as well as our new college football channel. I'll leave a link to that channel down in the description. I'd really appreciate it if you go over, subscribe to the channel, check out the videos that I'm posting over there. They're going to be more conceptual tutorials uh, because I, I don't really want to cover like the news of college football. I don't feel like that's like that big of a deal. Honestly, a lot of people are covering that. What I wanted to do was give some practical tips on how you can get ready for College Football 25 on that channel. So if you want to subscribe to that, that's free. It's in the description. And if you want to get all my eBooks, join school. It's going to be a great platform for us this year. $10 gets you access to all college football eBooks and all Madden eBooks.